uh, you miss worship and still want to join us, we are obviously recording, and you can find those recordings on our YouTube page. Giving is still an option online. If you don't want to carry your checkbook or cash with you, uh, you can set it up to give online. Uh, we are having a council meeting here in Livingston tom uh, tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. And next Sunday after worship, there's going to be a potluck that the Steph Parish has uh, planned uh, as a farewell potluck for my family. And uh, all three churches will be joining in for that. My last Sunday is June 20th, and Pastor, nope, Pastor Barbara will be here. You guys will be in the park with Pastor Greg uh, for the Sunday uh, at, at 9.30, at, at 9.30 at Bell Park for community worship uh, that Sunday. Pastor Barbara's filling in at the other two churches as I'm taking that Sunday as my last vacation Sunday to be able to pack and move. Uh, and then we'll begin at a different time of worship, the beginning of July. Uh, so our worship time will be bright and early, friends, at 8 o'clock in the morning. So bring your coffee, and uh, we'll have worship together. That'll be great. Are there other announcements for this morning? Yes, Mike. In your bulletin is this flyer. Your pastor parish relations committee recently were introduced to our new minister who is being appointed to us by the cabinet and the bishop. The cabinet consists of the bishop and then five district superintendents. So you can enjoy reading about Kristen and uh, she will start officially on August 1. However, new ministers, when they move, get one week sabbatical. So her first preaching Sunday will be August 8th at all three churches. Um, after Pastor Ty and Josh and family move out of the parsonage, we're going to be doing some refurbishing within the parsonage. Fortunately, we've got some time to do it with this transition time that we've been allotted. Um, so I encourage you to read about Kristen and when she arrives and her daughter, uh, welcome them warmly and pray for them as they prepare to move. It will be difficult. She's leaving at two churches. I'm sure she loves. Just like Ty. So there's more than several people to pray for during this month, month and a half, as our lives change and transition as a congregation and a charge. And as Kristen's life changes and transitions as a clergy person and the two churches she has been serving. Well, let's pray for everybody involved in this. Thank you. Now some of you might be asking, well, Pastor Ty has done the end of June and Kristen, Pastor Kristen is starting the beginning of August. What do we do for July? Well, much like when I was on maternity leave, I organized and planned people to come in and fill the pulpit. Um, and so that is what I am doing for July and the first Sunday of August as well. So there will be people filling the pulpit, some retired pastors, some lay people uh, filling the pulpit, and we will have church just like normal. But in July, we will be worshiping at 8 o'clock in the morning. Any other announcements for this morning? Just one side note, I want to say Kristen is, I need to call her Pastor Kristen. Pastor Kristen is wonderful. She has served several churches. Um, I wouldn't say that she's like a close friend of mine, but she is a colleague of mine, and I have been in contact with her for many years, and um, it's been a joy the last couple weeks to get to know her a little bit more. She was down uh, on Thursday to do some measuring in the parsonage, and I took her out for lunch, and she got to meet Beth as well uh, here in the office. 
And so I think she's going to be a wonderful, wonderful fit here, and I, you've got y'all are going to be in wonderful hands. Uh, so I just think you're going to absolutely adore her and her 16-year-old daughter Hannah, um, who I don't know exactly if she's going to be going to school at Iowa Grant or at Highland. Uh, there's some conversation between that, but I trust that y'all will welcome them very well in August. At this time, I invite you to grab your red hymnals and let's stand together and join with me for the call to worship, found on page 857. <laughs> the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. All your works shall give thanks to you, O God. And your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom. And tell of your power. To make known to all people your mighty deeds. And the glory and splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord upholds all who are falling. And rises up all who are falling. The eyes of all look to you. And you give them their food in due season. You open your hands. You set aside the desire of every living thing. All the Lord's ways are just. All the Lord's doings are kind. The Lord is near to all who call. To all who call upon the Lord in truth. The Lord fulfills the desire of all the faithful. And hears their cry and saves them. All who love the Lord, the Lord preserves. All the wicked the Lord destroys. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh must have his holy name forever and ever. I invite you to turn now to page 572 and let's sing together, pass it on. Mm -hmm. So let's pray for rain. 
Are there other joys or concerns that we want to share together this morning? Yes, Kay. Peter will be moving from the hospital now to back to Crest, Crest Ridge tomorrow. Okay. So praise God for that. How's his pneumonia doing? It's cleared up. Cleared up. And the dehydration is cleared up. So hopefully things will be back. I'm glad that he's able to transfer straight from the hospital back to Crest Ridge. Some familiarity there, so that's good. Thank you. Are there others? Yes, do you? My granddaughter Elena graduates today. Okay. Let's pray for Jean and Jack's granddaughter Elena as she graduates today. Others? Okay. Let's take a couple moments for personal prayer and then I'll leave us some prayer.
the offering and the offering plate and those that will after worship and in preparation for that and thanks of those that have let us pray my dear holy god we thank you for the ways that you continue to watch over us and the ways that you are with us and the ways that you for sure bless us Help us, God, to share that blessed assurance that we have from you, God, with others. And we do that not only by our words and our actions, but also by giving of our tithes and our offerings. And so we pray, God, that you will bless these offerings, that you will use them not only in these four walls, but in our community, in our state, and in our world. God, we thank you so much. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen. So today we continue our sermon series on the history of our favorite hymns. Today we're looking at Blessed Assurance. Fanny Crosby, who was a lifelong Methodist, wrote the words, and Phoebe Knapp composed the music. Now the following stories of Fanny and Phoebe came from several different sources, including the United Methodist Discipleship Ministries, St. Augustine Resource, or Record, and the book Then Sings My Soul. But first, let us begin with a fitting scripture to praise God, much like our call to worship this morning, as this hymn reminds us to praise our Savior all the day long. Our scripture this morning is 1 Thessalonians 5, 15 through 18. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone's self. Uh, everyone's, let me try again. But always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Frances Jane Crosby, who uh, better known as Fanny, was born in Putnam County, New York in 1820 on March 24th. A poorly trained doctor applied mustard plaster to her eyes when she was only six weeks old, rendering her totally blind. At age six though, she began composing hymns, and at a young age she knew that she had a special gift. At age nine, she wrote this poem, Oh, what a happy soul am I, although I cannot see. I'm resolved that in this world contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot and I won't. She became a student of the New York Institute of the Blind at age 15, and at age 22 joined the, uh, the staff um, teaching rhetoric and also history. Fanny married a man named Alexander who was also a student at the school and also became part of the institute faculty. He was a fine musician and much like Fanny, loved literature as well. One of Fanny's uh, best friends was affluent Phoebe Knapp. Now, I tried to do some research to figure out how someone like Fanny who had very humble beginnings became friends with someone who had uh, definitely not humble beginnings like Phoebe. Because Phoebe, and I couldn't find any of that information, so if anybody knows that, I would be interested to know. But anyway, Phoebe, she lived in the Knapp Mansion in Brooklyn, where she entertained lavishly. Phoebe was an extravagant dresser with a wardrobe full of elaborate gowns and diamond tiaras. Her music room, contained one of the finest collections of instruments in the country, and Fanny was a frequent house guest. One day in 1873, while Fanny was staying at the Knapp Mansion, Phoebe said that she had a tune that she wanted to play for Fanny. Going into the music room, she sat at the piano and played this new composition of her own while Fanny listened. Fanny immediately clapped her hands and exclaimed, why that song says, blessed assurance. She quickly then composed the rest of the words for all three verses and the refrain. And a great hymn was born that day. Blessed Assurance was published in 1873 in the monthly magazine Guide to Holiness. It became most popular when it was used by the Moody Sankey revivals in the 1880s throughout the U.S. and Great Britain, making Fanny Crosby a household name. 
Blessed Assurance has been part of our Methodist hymnal since 1889. Now, Fanny was the author of more than, get this, y'all, 8,000 gospel hymn texts. And she drew her inspiration for all of them from her own personal relationship and personal faith in God. Fanny published names, uh, and some of these 8,000 aren't under the pen name as Fanny Crosby. She had different names that she used, including Ella Dale, Mrs. Kate Wrigley, and Miss Viola V.A. Now, Fanny captured the poetic essence of John Wesley, who's the founder of the Methodist movement, understanding of Christian perfection in the phrase, oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. The entire hymn is focused on heaven, a place where, as the hymn says, perfect submission and perfect delight will take place. The earthly insistence is one of watching and waiting and looking above. As we submit ourselves to Christ and are filled with his goodness and lost in his love, we are remade in Christ's image and are moving toward Christian perfection. This hymn also appeals to the senses in a rich way. Not only do we have a foretaste of glory divine, but we also experience visions of rapture burst on my sight, and we hear echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This refrain calls us to praise my Savior all the day long, echoing 1 Thessalonians 5 of rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Because of her long life, Annie Crosby had an extraordinary relationship with several United States presidents, even penning poems in their honor on occasion. And she was influential in their spiritual walk as well, specifically for presidents uh, Martin Van Buren, uh, the 10th president, which I told I had written wrong here, so the 10th president, I'll just say that, James K. Polk and Grover Cleveland. She also addressed a joint session of Congress on the topic of education for the blind. Middle class women, and especially blind middle class women of the 19th century in the United States, had little to no voice in worship. But one of the only ways for a woman to claim authority to be heard in worship is by God's direct revelation. Fanny Crosby readily claimed God's personal revelation as a source for all of her hymns. Her personal revelation when, uh, then became a communal inspiration as Christians throughout the world sang her hymns and confirmed her faith as their own. Fanny Crosby died February 12th, 1915. If I believe right, if I look back here, she was 95 years old. When she died, she surely sang, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine, and this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long, because this indeed, friends, is my story. And this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. As we move to a time of communion, does everyone have the little cups with the juice and the wafer? Okay, if you don't, uh, we can get those for you. At this time, I invite you to start the tedious task of opening them if you feel comfortable. If you don't, that's fine. Feel free to take them home with you. There are two layers. Uh, the first layer, when you peel that back, will reveal the wafer. The second one, as you peel that back, will reveal the juice. Um, feel free to do that so you're ready to go. I will make it to the part when I invite you to join in, um, in with that. On the night before Jesus was betrayed, he sat around the table with his disciples, and after they were done eating, he took a loaf of bread, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body that's been broken for you. Each time you eat this, remember me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, and he said, this is my blood that has been poured out for you. Each time you drink this, remember me. So each time you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Mighty and holy God, we do thank you for today. We thank you for the gifts before us of wafers and bread and juice. 
And we pray, God, that as we partake of them, God, that you will bless them. And that as we partake of them, that we will be transformed just a little bit. That when we leave from here, maybe we're a little bit more patient. Or maybe we're a little bit more kind. A little bit more joyful. A little bit more um, fill in the blank. God, we know what we need to be more of to be more like you. And so help us, God, as we take these simple elements that you have blessed, God. And as we take of them, help us, God, to be reminded not only of your son's sacrifice on the cross, but of Jesus' resurrection, knowing that the cross was not the end story. But because of Jesus' resurrection, we know that, God, you have your kingdom in heaven, but also your kingdom reigns here on earth. And you have called each and every one of us by name to be in this kingdom here on earth, to share your good news of love with others. So help us, God, as we fill up, help us to be able to share with others. God, we thank you so much for your prayer, all this in your son's name. Amen. When we take uh, the wafer and the juice, you can do it, you can dunk the wafer in the juice, you can take them both at the same time, you can take them separately, however you want to do it, you feel most comfortable doing it, feel free to do that. But the body of Christ broken for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. We have communed with God and with one another, so let us join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to take out the black hymnal, uh, the faith we sing. Let's turn to page 2226, and let's stand and sing together.